So welcome. Uh, yeah, I'm a member of the English department, uh, and maybe we can start with some quick introductions before I jump into the talk, but there's a handout as well, so hopefully everybody got that. It's quite an informal handout. It's just really, you know, some tips. And uh, But anyways, um, so yeah, you just learned who I am. I'm Christine Hildebrandt. Here's, this is Ben Ostermeyer. He's our technician. Uh, and then Zach Liebling, who's um, uh, our research assistant professor in IRIS, and so why don't we kind of go around the table? I know some most of you were here last time, but uh, Liz, why don't we start with you? Hi, I'm Liz Kelly. I am in the English department. I'm Rich Keating, retired biology department, but also doing research at MOBOT. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm a second year grad student in the Earth for Southie program. Welcome. Uh, Allison Thomason, history department. I'm Brian Bagley, financial aid. Uh, I'm Justin Walker. I'm a junior philosophy major. Yeah, and also, are you in, uh, are you working with? Um, yeah, I'm working with Tom. Yeah, Tom, okay. Okay, you're working with Tom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Tom Valley, foreign languages and literature. We just implemented a name for a project called the Divination Studio. You're going to be building an Omeka site or a WordPress Omeka. site? Omeka site. Okay, <laughs> great. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. So everyone, welcome. Um, uh, so. I want to um, start by saying that um, my experience with Google Maps is mostly self-taught by messing around with the app and seeing what I can do with it, uh, either for um, making maps, static maps that I then save as images and insert into uh, research reports or papers that I'm writing, but also um, uh, you, can, you can use the site that you've modified and customized and insert it as a, as a container, so to speak, or as a link into other um, web-based applications. So there are a lot of things that you can do with uh, Google My Maps. So basically, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the power of My Maps because what I encourage you do, to do is play and tinker on your own. I just have given you some steps and some tips on how to tinker wisely or not feel like you're wasting your time. Um, so actually, I'm giving two brief presentations about Google Maps. One today is just to kind of get started and introduce you to basics like dropping pins and saving your map and sharing it if you'd like. Uh, and then if you come back in a month, I believe, it, uh, it's in March, uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit more about the layers of maps, how you can layer multiple maps on top of each other. And also, if you have lots of um, um, geospatial data, lots of coordinates that you want to import into a map at once, let's say you have 50 locations, it's quite time consuming to do that one after one pin after one pin after one pin, and you can import your uh, points by, uh, for example, using an Excel spreadsheet, uh, and, and then modify those, create labels for the points, and so on and so forth. So that's what I'll be talking about in March. So really today is to just get, get you started. Um, so uh, in order to use Google Maps, you have to have a Gmail account. This is part of Google's attempt at world domination, maybe. Uh, so if you don't have a Gmail account, then you can't really do anything with it. But um, it's, so far, it's a small price to pay for um, having access to this. And then you can simply find, you can find my maps. If you have a Gmail account, you get to see my email inbox. So I, 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 I link my emails, uh, my pro public and private emails into, a, into multiple folders and inboxes. But um, you can go to maps here, and then um, it will give you the option of opening up your my maps in your account. Uh, or else you can just search online, you can search for Google My Maps, and usually it's the top result because Google has orchestrated it that way. So uh, so when you click on that, because I'm already logged into Google, it will take me, and basically what it's taken me to is a whole bunch of maps that I've created over the years for different types of projects I've been involved in. M some of these are maps that I've ended up using in different projects uh, You know uh, that, that I've worked on. I, I work with, um, uh, I'm a linguist who studies languages of South Asia, South and Southeast Asia, so if I'm looking at uh, cross-linguistic surveys or something like that in a paper I'm writing, then I'll have lots of points representing the languages and their location. And then I just have a lot of kind of silly maps that I use for testing and playing around and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, so basically what I want to do today is to create a new map. Uh, let's see, this is always a bit um, different. Whenever I'm on the display, it reorients, you know, the, um, uh, the page that I'm looking at, so I always have to hunt around a bit for buttons to, to click. But um, so if you're following along, you can go ahead and, and do this, or else you can just watch. It depends on how you learn best. Uh, so if you're following along um, on, a, on your own laptop or phone, once you've logged in, you want to create a new map. 
and it will just open up a blank. Usually what it does is, yeah, it, it defaults to the United States, so that's another conversation for another day. Um, and so what you get here is um, an untitled map with different options and features. And I'm only going to cover some of the options and features today. The other options I'll come back to in a month. So, um, and I would say um, s uh, you want to give your map a name. So um, let's see, I can call it um, uh, SIUE and Cahokia version 2. Um, that's what, those are the points I'm going to use as examples. So surprise. And then you can describe your map if you want. It's really just up to you how you want to. That's particularly if you're going to make your map public. So I should note that right now it's a private map. Nobody else has access to it. And you can make it public at different levels. You can either make it public by invitation only, or you can share a link, and you, or you can just make it public uh, so that people who search through the Google Maps can find your map if they enter the right search terms. So um, there's no copyright issues then? Re no, re they make it fully or? open and accessible. Okay. The one thing you'll find is whenever you print a map, or share it, you're always going to see that Google watermark at the bottom, mm. that logo. That follows you everywhere. Uh, you can't remove mm. it. So that's their way of, you know, allowing you to fully share your map without no, you know, w without denying where it came from, basically. Um, yeah. So then you save it, and so now it's it's saved in my my maps um, drive. Uh, so I can come and come back to it later if I want and find it. Uh, so that's always the first thing I encourage that you do. Uh, we'll come to sharing in just a minute um, after I demo a few things about it because I don't really want to share it yet. I'm tinkering with it and creating <laughs> stuff, so I don't want to share a partially completed map. It's not a masterpiece yet, or a masterpiece. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, let's start with uh, doing a search. I can search for Southern Illinois, and of course, there's lots of um, SIUE options here. I'm going to do the hairpin drive one. That seems to be the central locus, that's, for example, what Panera requires that I put for the delivery address when I order lunch. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, so notice that when I've done a search for it, it automatically generated a pin, and that's because um, SIUE is a known location on Google Maps. Uh, eventually, we, we could be dropping pins in places that are not known locations, and I, and I can show you how to do that, but it found SIUE very quickly, and it has all kinds of information about it, like a phone number or an address or a web page, and that's because Google has already created this place as a place on Google Maps. Can you tell us how to get rid of pins? Yes, I can tell you about that. Yep, well. absolutely. Okay. So um, now uh, the one problem with the scalability on this is um, things get obscured. But uh, So if I want that pin to stay, so first of all, let's talk about if I'm happy with this pin, I found the right location, because what if I accidentally wanted to search for Southern Illinois uh, you know, Medical Center or something like that? Uh, um, I may, may want to remove that pin, but let's say for now we're happy. You add to map, and that's going to commit the pin to the map. So it's there now. And we can, we can change the pin's colors and shapes and make it different shapes and sizes, but I'm happy with it as a blue pin with a white dot for the moment. Um, but let's say um, I wasn't happy with that location and I needed to change it. That's where this little dialog box comes in handy. And basically, um, I can... Um, remove this location, um, let's see, uh, uh, I can delete the layer, yeah, uh, like that, and that will re remove it. Um, I can also um, remove just that, one. maybe a layer has lots of locations, I can delete individual locations as well. So let me go back to, let's go back and drop that pin again. Google Maps will be like, look, do you want it or don't you? <laughs> Make up your mind. <laughs> yeah, so I can also remove it here, I believe, is the button to remove the pin. Uh, let's see, did that do it? Yeah, so that removes it. That, that you'll, uh, let's see, this, button, this pin should be tra uh, trash it, I think. Yeah, that's what you do is a little trash okay. icon. Again, when I'm hooked up to the data projector, some of the options look different. So the, um, the buttons I was clicking when it was just me and my laptop at home last night look different once I'm hooked up to the data projector. So it can be a little bit awkward to demo this. But let's say I'm, let's bring it back again. <laughs> I really do want it here. Okay, so add to map. So there it is. Um, and now I can go in and I can um, make uh, some personal uh, modifications to this to a, to a certain extent. Like I can't change the name publicly to make it like, you know, uh, Yale University or something. There are certain things you can't do to established locations. Mm -hmm. But I can go in and maybe I have some photos 
Uh, so one thing maybe I want to do is change the style. We'll start very basically. If you want to change the color or change the um, icon uh, shapes, and uh, it kind of has a bigger, it's, you know, it's kind of like emojis. The library is always expanding. It wasn't even nearly this big when I first started making maps. Um, or else you can, you can import a custom, custom icon, which I've never tried before, so I welcome you to explore that. Um, but I, I'm happy with this icon for now. So crisis, crisis icons, yeah, for disaster mapping and these types of things. So uh, I'm happy with the color and the shape, so I'm not going to make any changes. Note also that it um, lets you know the latitude and the longitude. So that latitude is first and longitude is second. And um, you can uh, eventually export this information into a spreadsheet uh, uh, if you want to save that. If you have just a single point, then you can just note it down. Uh, but let's say you have 12 or 20 or 50 different uh, points and you want to export the latitude and longitude to have in a database of some kind. That feature is there, but I'm not going to talk about that today. That you have to wait till next month. Of course, you could always go in yourself and figure it out, but, um, but you could always come back in March as well. <laughs> so, uh, so that's this. This uh, edit button lets you, um, well, you can edit it. It's true. Uh, I, I take that back. You can go in, and, and, but it's not going to change... What I'm going to say is it's not going to change the way that other people see it on Google Maps. So if somebody is looking for SIUE on Google Maps on their phone and you change it to Yale University, uh, for example, um, that doesn't mean that people who are driving to SIUE are going to get rerouted to Yale or to think this is named Yale. This is always just going to be your, your map that you're, that you're sharing. So I, it's basically creating a layer over Google Earth that you can make your own personal edits to and share, but it's not changing the infrastructure to Google Maps. And I, I've taught this workshop before. I've spread it out over a week, uh, which is why it's a little hard to condense it. And my students sometimes worry that they're going to break Google Maps. And I say, you can't break it. It's not possible unless you, you know, hack into the system. Don't do that. Uh, but um, basically what you're doing is creating your own personal layer and then, and then making, setting different public access options. So I'm going to go back and make it SIUE. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I can add some notes here. I could say, for example, you know, I would avoid, you know, Route 157 right now if you're coming from Belleville or, you know, like you can make notes because there's road construction that's making 157 a nightmare to drive on. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you can save that and that becomes a, a kind of annotation to your, your pin. Um, a lot of times people want to know how to add images or uh, videos to a pin. That's something that I've done a lot of work on. Uh, so you can upload um, files from your hard drive. Um, if you have a web camera, you can snap a photo, uh, but it needs Flash Player. And I don't know if Flash Player is in supported for certain types of operating systems now. It's not a feature I use very often. Uh, I mostly either upload images or else I'll find an image URL from another site. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. How to, um, if you come across an image from another web page and you want to incorporate that into your own modified map, you can do that by uh, getting that image's URL. Um, or else, if you have photos on Google Drive, uh, you can, uh, because it's a Google map, well, pretty much anything you store on your Google Drive is accessible. Uh, um, that's a nice feature about Google in general. Um, so like here are a bunch of random photos of these that I've taken and then some photos of me in the field. I don't keep many pictures on my Google Drive, actually, um, so uh, that, there's not a lot to choose from, but some people keep all their, you know, if they store photos on the cloud, they might keep them there. And then um, here's some um, options for, particularly for videos. Videos, um, uh, right now, one extreme limitation for Google is that if you want to incorporate a video, it has to come from YouTube. Um, although, um, there are um, workarounds to that, and I noted them on the handout here, so I can kind of show you that workaround in a minute. There are some other pages now that are kind of using the embed option, these iframe code embed options, where you can bring that video directly in. I'll show you an example of that in just a minute. Um, so basically, uh, you can either just do a random search of uh, YouTube, or if you know specifically a video, a specific video that you would like to bring, uh, you can bring that in, and it's, it makes it very easy. You just go to uh, Google and um, so for uh, YouTube. So, for example, I found this YouTube video of, it's an introduction. I'm using Cahokia uh, Mounds as the, the other. I'm going to have that as a second pin that I bring in so that you can see 
how you can link to um, locations on the map. So that's why I have this browser up. So, so um, Cahokia made a promotional video for their, for their site, which makes sense. And you can actually go in and you can share that, um, that, the, that video through the link, which of course is a little hard to do when I'm hooked up to the data projector. How do I do this? I think if I go to full screen, yeah. You can click on share. And then it gives you um, a link that you can copy and paste. Um, there's additional ways to share as well. I just, this is where I can mention, maybe, maybe not. Oh well, that's the link there. I'll, sh <laughs> I'll show you the um, embed option uh, within another video. Um, so, uh, so when you bring that link in, You can copy the link, bring it over to your map, paste the link, and it should find the video for you even before, it gives you a preview of the video before you even make, commit your choice. So select. And so now that video appears in a little frame within that dialog box of SIU. I know that is not an SIUE video, it's a Cahokia Bounds video, but just for the um, purpose of, sh of sharing. Um, so th that, and then you save it. And so now you have this here. If you want to add photos, um, you, you can actually add many different photos and videos, and what it does is it generates a kind of slideshow where the user can click on arrows to go from one image to the next or to scroll between images and videos. So for example, let me upload an image. Uh, so I'm gonna, I, I have one I saved to my desktop yesterday, and that is the Cahokia video. Let's see, where is it? Yeah, it's this one here, Arch Day. So, uh, so I can preview. So this is actually a picture of a dig going on at Cahokia that I downloaded from their website, uh, and I uploaded it here. And it will give you a little preview. Are you sure, you know, this is the picture you wanted to choose? And now that is there as an image. And I should now have the option of sliding through, scrolling through. No, where did the video go? Yesterday I had the video and the images up. Yeah, let's upload another image. Now this will be a completely random image. Let's put my dog up. Yeah, that's my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not at all connected to either SIUE or... Oh, it looks like there's like a little... Like right below the image there's like a... It says three of three. Okay, that's where the button goes. So on my laptop yesterday, the little scrolling button was higher up. So I just, I lose things all the time when I plug it to the data projector. It does something with my screen. I need to go into my screen settings probably yeah, to, to stop this from happening. Yeah. So yeah, okay, thank you. Thanks for seeing that. I appreciate it. So it did, in fact, here's the video, here's image one, and here's image two, none of which have anything to do with SIUE really. Maybe the dig has something to do. Uh, but those look like younger kids digging and not SIUE students. So those are some things you can do with a point once you've dropped it and saved it. You can edit the name, you can create some kind of a um, description or annotation of the pin. Uh, you can add images, you can add vi video. Uh, there are some limits to that. So, uh, but um, you can do quite a few <coughs> things. One other thing I wanted to show you is um, just a, another, let's say you wanna have multiple pins. I'll just show you uh, kind of how to drop a second pin. So I'm done with this now. You can also search by zip code, for example. I think I gave you the zip code that Cahokia Park is in. Um, what is that zip code? It's on the front page and in bold face, it's 62234, yeah. That's not gonna give me Cahokia, but it'll give me the area in which Cahokia can be found. So it thinks I want to drop, it's gonna find, find some, it's gonna find kind of the epicenter of that zip code. But if I wanna find Cahokia, uh, I can kind of look around here uh, until I find what I'm looking for. So maybe the post office that it? That yeah, or where the post office yeah, location yeah. is, yeah, exactly. So uh, even I'm not entirely sure where, oh, whoops, I'm looking in the wrong place. I'm going back Around to St. Louis. Columns, so that's why yeah, columns. yeah, that's right. Uh, let's see, State Park Place, this is probably where Cahokia is. So I could kind of just close mm -hmm. this 
and go here um, and I can, um, sorry, pin, I don't want you anymore, but oh, we'll get, I'll get rid of you after. Um, uh, let's see, drop a pin. So uh, what I want to do is add a marker and drop it here where Cahokia Mounds is. It has its own location, so it's, it can be a little confusing sometimes. If I were to click, if I were to just click on this pin here, it would pull up the same information for Cahokia as um, I found for SIUE. But let's say I want to drop the pin just a little bit lower here. It will drop a pin to this kind of un unknown location, point two. And so let's say I really let's say I want to call that Monk's Mound or something like that. And then say you know this is where Monk's Mound is found is found, and then save it. <coughs> And now I can, again, annotate this if I want. I can add <laughs> images, I can add video, and so on and so forth. So, uh, so that's helpful. If I want to, uh, so I'm going to zoom out. And so I should have, well, I have my mystery pin, but I also should have my SIUE pin. I can get rid of this one. I don't want to add it to the map. Let's see. Where's, yeah, it's this one here. Uh, have to click the X. Yeah, so thank you. Yep, yeah, it was on the right side when I was right. <laughs> off the data projector. So let's say this is a good learning moment. If I have the pin, I have a pin, I don't want it anymore. That was something you mentioned. This little X should allow me to remove it from the map without removing the other pins I've created. Yeah, um, everything is on the other side of the screen for me this morning. Uh, if I want, let's say I'm kind of interested in how to get from SIUE to Monk's Mound. Uh, often that's how we use Google Maps, we, um, especially on our phone, that's for me, I'll, I'll type into Google Maps how do I get from my house to Monk's Mound and it will give me directions. Uh, you can also um, display, you can visually represent this, so let's say I'm on the SIUE map uh, and I want to um, oops, show uh, distance and trajectory to Monk's Mound. Um, I can use um, uh, this line here, so uh, uh, and this this allows you to add a series of directions. This option here, I'm not going to um, look at that now. And this uh, this is just a temporary ruler to measure distance. So let's just say I'm curious how far away is SIUE from Monk's Mound. I can click on the pin and drag it to the other pin, and it's telling me it's about 9.74 miles from A to B, like that. Uh, um, okay, thank you. Uh, it, um, this this pins a little bit more. Um, this draw a line feature is a little bit more detailed. It lets you simply add a line, uh, which will also tell you distance, or else it will find the best driving route for you, the best biking route for you, or the best walking route. So let's route. So let's walk from SIUE to Monk's Mound. It's a quite a nice fitness walk. Uh, so we would draw a line from here. And then we follow the trajectory. So it's going to notice how the line keeps changing as I expand out because it's trying to find footpaths and sidewalks that will take me to Monk's Mound. So it's not going to necessarily follow state highways, although it might. It just depends on what's available. And so some of it might be the Madison County you know, footpath and cycle network, and some of it might just be random sidewalks. Uh, and then here. So, so it's now found. So notice that this, as the crow flies versus as a human would walk, trajectory is different. Uh, but it's still giving you roughly the same distance. Yes, question. How did you change it to as a human will go versus Oh, the if you line click on line and draw a line and just hover over it for a minute, it should, okay, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the driving route will look different than the walking route, presumably, because humans will walk where cars are not allowed. Yeah. Christine, yeah. you probably use this for looking at the palm, right? Yeah. Have you encountered any of those kind of international... Because when I look at maps in China, they don't like Google Maps. Yeah, so Nepal's not as um, sensitive okay. to mapping. And it's, it's not that they don't want to be. I think they just don't have the infrastructure to be sensitive. So the, um, the, I, let's, call, let's say the IT infrastructure in a country like Nepal is not nearly as advanced or suspicious or controlling mm. as it would be in a country like China. Not for lack of trying. They just don't have the resources. The thing about Nepal is that um, there just aren't a lot of place names that are labeled or mapped in Nepal. Mm -hmm. If you go to maps, especially when you leave the capital, Kathmandu is very well mapped, the capital city, and some of the other major cities. But once you leave that area, you just get these often outdated satellite imagery maps without many villages identified. 
So that's a, another conversation I'd be happy to have with you because Shun Fu Hu, who's in the geography department, he and I worked together on a, on a map, an interactive map uh, of uh, the area where I do my fieldwork in Nepal, which is very much out in, in the mountains, uh, very, very into the, mm. we're, we're talking about the Tibetan plateau area, and, ver and only a couple of those villages even showed up on Google Maps. So he worked with Google to create some, we had to show some proof and demonstrate that those places were actually towns to get some points there, um, but... Um, I mean, somebody has to make the map before Google can put it on. Yeah, so that map had been made probably yeah. by military satellites yeah. or, or, you know, I'm not sure. That's a yeah. larger kind of ethical question, like where does Google get its, its, ma its different maps, its topographic and satellite maps and imagery from. Uh, uh, but that, stu that stuff already existed. It's just that the place names weren't located mm -hmm. on the maps. The, the points in which villages were located hadn't been mapped before. So as I always say when I talk about undiscovered languages, it's only undiscovered to us. The people who speak the language knew it existed, and that's true for the place names too. The people who live there know it exists. It's just that it hadn't been mapped to Google Maps before. Yeah, so, so yeah, China's a complicated. Uh, and, and then for Nigeria, I'm not sure. That's, again, eventually uh, we're working with Ron Schaefer's materials. <clears throat> if and when we decide to incorporate maps into our... Um, Archive, our digital archive will kind of figure out what the issues are, yeah. Um, but however, you don't need Google to create place names. If you know where something is located, if you have a latitude and a longitude, you can drop that pin there. So, um, and that's really what I'll be talking about the next time I'm here. And I can show you examples of how we did that in Nepal. We, we took some um, GIS trackers with us when we went to, to the field. So we were able to geospatially track ourselves as we moved around and go back and refer to that latitude and longitude data later to drop pins on Google Maps as we were creating the locations that we were working with. So, um, so there is a, a way of doing that. So as long as you know roughly where you're going, or even just randomly search a Google Map. But again, in China, if there are whole areas that are blocked off from Google Maps, then there's very little you can do because you don't even have the base map. You don't have the base layer to work with. They have like a, it's basically kind of like the copycat system, which is called Baidu. Okay, it's their, it's their version. Mm -hmm. Google template, and then just call it by doing, then do other things inside okay. of that. So I use that usually. Okay. And it's, a lot of it is just a mirror of, of Google, but the functionality is different. It would be interesting to see if some of the My Maps features on this system are still in place, if you can do that. What kind of autonomy yeah. do people have to do these things? So. Okay. Sorry to no, that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to wrap it up in a minute, because these are usually supposed to be just a little over half an hour long. Uh, because I think uh, I'm going to show you about sharing uh, maps, uh, like how to make a map public or how to share it. Um, but uh, basically, you can see as I've added um, information about this map, it's creating these new layers. So basically, one layer is simply the points, mm -hmm. and another layer is directional information, these lines that I'm drawing from one point to the next. And that's the basic idea of layers. Think of layers as a level of information. Uh, think of it like as if you're building a a really fancy ham sandwich or something like that. You've got the basic layer, with maybe which is the bread, and then you add another layer, which is your condiment, and another layer, which is your meat, and another layer, layer which is maybe your lettuce or tomato or your cheese. And each of those is adding some more, um, some more definition or detail to your map. So that's the idea behind layers, and, and I can show you uh, what to do with that later. Another thing I haven't really gotten into is labeling your points, because pretty much most of the points we're working with are already labeled. But in particular, if you're discovering new locations, uh, you can go ahead and create labels and that pop up and are visible uh, based, like for example, if you want to create a static image of the map and um, put it into a, a paper that you're writing, those points can have labels that pop off of them to show you what, what those points refer to. So I'll get into more of that next time. <coughs> um, so the last thing I want to do is to say, uh, you can um, you can preview a map before you print it or something like that. That just kind of generates a slightly different. <clears throat> so this is like, oh, what if I wanted to print this or something like that or share it? This is what people will see. Um, and you you can make a map view only, and you can also give people permissions to edit the map. So let's say you're making an interactive map and you want to share it with some colleagues so they can help you. Uh, you can share an editable version as well. So, but anyways, in order to share, you have to click on this little icon here, share, and it opens up permission, levels of permission. Uh, so uh, if I want, right now it's private, only I can see this map, 
but if I want to change it, then I, there's three levels that Google offers. Obviously, the one I'm on now, which is no sharing. Uh, uh, um, another one is whoever I send the link to can have access to this. That is controlled, but you have to trust that people won't willy-nilly share the link with the world, right? And then finally, um, there's just general public. And that, like I said, um, anybody who searches through Google Map Library will be able to see your map. And they'll, they'll be able to see the URL, and they can use that URL and post it wherever. So, um, so once you turn the, at least some level of sharing on, I'm going to do um, anyone with the link, and then that opens up new options. They can either edit or they can view. And then I save that, and then, ah, done. You can also um, invite specific people. Um, you can um, just email people on your own and share the link with them. You can assign certain restrictions to editors, to, to other co-owners or co-editors of the map. Um, and then once you've done that, um, you can go up here to this top part, up next to the map title, and um, you can embed on, oops, it's not, oh, maybe it has to be the top level of public access in order to embed it. Let's try it again, share. Uh, change, change to, yeah, because basically mm -hmm. it's saying anybody can have this link. Mm -hmm. Save, save. Okay, now I should be able to embed on my site. And it, cre it creates a little bit of code. For those of you who are familiar with what an iframe is, it creates a bit of code that says um, copy this code and paste it into, like, let's say you're building a WordPress page and you want to have a, a map box. A lot of times you'll see this if you look up, up like restaurants on, online, there'll be a, a Google map showing where they're located. Somebody went into my maps, dropped a pin on their restaurant, made it a public link, and then embedded that link onto their restaurant's web page. And so it opens up, it launches a little box on the web page with your map there so that people know, oh, okay, that's where the restaurant is located. So that's what this embed link does. Yeah. If you're having, like, let's say you're having students do projects where they're not creating a WordPress, right, but they mm -hmm. want to include the map, mm -hmm. say, in a Prezi, a PowerPoint, yeah. something like that, how, they don't use the embed function. Is that right? Like, I'm not sure use, how to embed this they, they into trouble. PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, we had trouble when we were trying that. So we were doing screenshots, which was... Yes, and screenshots are, easy, they're just still, they're still images. Right. They're uneditable still pictures of right. the map, okay. which mm -hmm. is one way to do it, but... Yeah, in terms of like of things like Microsoft Office applications or Prezi, I'm, uh, what that often means, and I, I hate glancing at Ben all the time, but it means you have to go into the back end of the system and try to do some customization to create. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> but I know that on sites like WordPress, um, in Omeka, for example, you can do iframes. Uh, when my students do in my language endangerment and, and death course, they. They have to, they profile language, that's their big project. And so one of the steps is to locate the language in the world, um, which can be more challenging than you think because some languages are in lots of places, you know, not just in one, English. <laughs> and, uh, and then, build, and then um, map that, and, and they use Omeka as their platform. And so I'm wondering if Scalar probably has a container yeah, you option as well. Yeah, you could do it We learned about last week, yeah. Okay. So um, I, it might be, Liz, it might be possible to do a Google Sheet, but not Google Sheet. Google Slides. Google Slides. Okay. Google's version of Since uh, it's PowerPoint. Google owned, they might. Yeah, play that's nice. true. Google, that's I'll really true. Out, yeah. Slides, yeah, you, th that might be worth checking. If you're able to do that, please let me know because then I could. Try yeah. yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. You see the power. Potential. I can look into that too. Yeah, that, so. that would be kind of a cool thing, I think. <clears throat> okay, so I think what I've shown you is just enough to get you in trouble today for you to be able to go off and explore and try things on your own. Um, if you are coming back in March, uh, and also you can ask some questions now. I may, I can't guarantee I'll have the answer, but uh, we can co March collaborative build the answer. What's that? What's the March date? Oh, I'll have 27th. to. Yeah, it's going to okay. be the end right. of March. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll have a look. Okay. Yeah, thank you. March 27th. Then I'll go a little bit more into layers and importing and exporting larger batches of uh, geo-coordinate data. Yeah, it's so, March 27th. Okay, thank you. <laughs>